Recently, the head of the Black Lives Matter chapter in New York, his name is Hawk Newsom, made an assertion. He said, poverty causes crime. And the problem is, is that crime is caused by poverty. <laughs> what? You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. In my first book, The 10 Things You Can't Say in America, I talked about crime. You know, in 1960s, the area of California that had the greatest amount of crime was an area that had the lowest income, the highest unemployment rate, the highest proportion of families with incomes under $4,000 a year, the least educational attainment, the highest tuberculosis rate, and the highest proportion of substandard housing. You know what area that was in California? It was right outside San Francisco called Chinatown. Yet in the entire penal system of the whole state of California, there were five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. I repeat, five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. If poverty causes crime, it should have been full of Chinese Americans. And there are many more problems with Mr. Newsom's assertion. Take the 30s during the Great Depression, or the 40s, or the 50s, when black poverty was high and discrimination against blacks was high. In 1940, 87% of blacks live below the federally defined level of poverty. Yet in the 1930s, black homicide went down. The 1940s, black homicide went down. 1950s, black homicide went down. You know when it increased about 89%? The 1960s, when Lyndon Johnson, with the best of intentions, launched what he called the War on Poverty. Suddenly, the percentage of black kids being born into the world without a father married to the mother skyrocketed. And as I've said many times before, don't take Elder's word for it, take Barack Obama's word for it. One of the statistics that children who grow up with a out of father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. They're nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. Mr. Newsom ought to be asking this simple question. Why have we gone from having 25% of blacks born outside of wedlock in 1965 when Lyndon Johnson launched his war to 70% today? You cannot blame that on poverty. Here's another problem. The people who can least afford the crime are the very people that people like Hawk Newsom purports to care about. This is an article from the late great economist Walter Williams. It's called Unappreciated Crime Costs. Crime imposes a hefty tax on the people who can least afford it. He's referring to the law-abiding residents of black neighborhoods. Because a lot of businesses don't go into the inner city because of crime, because of theft, residents bear the time and the cost of going outside their community to do the shopping. Quote, the true villains are the criminals who make some businesses unprofitable. By the way, he writes, these are equal opportunity criminals. They will victimize a black-owned business just as they would victimize a white-owned business. Remember some of the riots during the summers, the mostly peaceful riots victimizing black businesses? Owner Adrienne Alvarez and her husband compelled to come to their Orange Theory Fitness franchise in the early hours of Sunday morning. We weren't necessarily trying to defend the business, but we wanted to go clean up. We wanted to let people know we were in support. When I got the phone call to come over here, like... That was Shoe Mountain's owner, Kareef Johnston's reaction to this. They broke down all, like I said, our, our gate that we had. This front door glass was smashed. There was glass all over this floor. It was just something hard to bear. <laughs> The next morning was when I came in, um, and that's when I saw the damage. I just energetically felt the hurt. The rioting and looting in late May took another major hit, and their store in Michigan was one of the many vandalized. It's just been like a domino effect, one thing after the next, after the next. Ronald Reagan saw it 40 years ago. Massive inflation that we haven't seen since today. In his own words, inflation is as violent as a mugger as frightening as an armed robber, and as deadly as a hitman. And right now, your retirement accounts are under attack thanks to the inflationary policies of this administration. If you've not yet called Birch Gold, the only people I trust 
to help you diversify your 401ks and IRAs into gold, then you are missing the boat. Actually, you're treading water without a life vest. Birch Gold has your life vest. Let them help you convert an IRA or 401k into a tax sheltered IRA in gold. With thousands of satisfied customers and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, you can trust Birch Gold to help protect your savings. Just go to birchgold.com slash Larry right now to get a no-cost, no-obligation info kit. This comprehensive 20-page guide reveals how gold and silver can protect your savings and how you can buy them under the umbrella of a tax-sheltered account. So, do it right now. Go to birchgold.com slash Larry. That's B-I-R-C-H gold.com slash Larry. Walter Williams continues. In low-crime areas, FedEx, UPS, and other delivery companies routinely leave packages containing valuable merchandise on the doorstep if nobody's home. That saves the expense of redelivery and saves recipients the expense of having to go and pick up the packages. However, in high crime neighborhoods, delivery companies leaving packages at the door or supermarkets leaving goods outside unattended would be equivalent, he writes, to economic suicide. Fearing robberies, taxi drivers, including black drivers, often refuse to accept telephone calls for home pickups and frequently pass prospective black customers who hail them on the street. Again, black cabbies, and I've talked to them in New York, often will not pick up black would-be riders because they fear crime and they fear going to a neighborhood where they can't get a, fa a fare back to the area where they first were. So for all these reasons, a lot of black cabbies are not picking up prospective black customers. Nothing to do with racism and nothing to do with poverty. Walter Williams also writes about another unappreciated cost of crime, and that's home values. Homes where there's a lot of crime will appreciate less rapidly than homes where there's no crime or will even face depreciation. And then when there's people moving in, middle class and upper class moving in, you have people like Spike Lee condemning this. It's called gentrification. Never mind, it means more amenities, more stores, and more cops. Hope you enjoyed that short video. Now to watch the full video, just click on the link below and watch it on Epic TV. It only costs $1 a month to sign up and you'll get unlimited access to all the great exclusive content on the platform. Now as you know, this show is now exclusively on Epic TV. So by signing up for just $1 a month, you're supporting me and my team to keep it going. I promise you, you'll not be disappointed. Thank you and God bless. I'll see you on Epic TV. Larry Elder here, and I've got some great news for you. If you're tired of the censorship in this country, then you're in luck. You can go over to epictv.com and watch honest programs that don't spin the facts. Epictv.com is a brand new, no censorship video platform where you can watch not only my show, but other deep documentaries, great program, wholesome movies that you can watch with your entire family. So head over to epictv.com. I'll see you there. <laughs>